Absolutely. Um, Ricky, uh, obviously in the news as well over the last sort of week or two, uh, Gerald Miller has reportedly failed another test uh, for uh, PEDS. I mean, what, what do you think about this? Obviously, a lot of people have had their opinion about Gerald Miller off the back of the situation when he was meant to fight Anthony Joshua a year ago. But um, he seems to be in, I'm not saying the same situation, but a similar situation now. Keeps happening, doesn't it? You know what I mean? And the thing is, with, um, with you know, with, there's so many, whether it be multivitamins or, or you know, or, you know, a protein or, or milkshakes or products or all the products that you can take these days. And there's that many different ones out there. You've got to be so careful when you put it. And some people fail drug tests and they'll say, well, I had this, I had that, I had that. And you've got to turn around and say, listen, there's that many things you can put in your mouth now in order to, to help your training camp. You know, mistakes can be made, can't they? You know what I mean? Because there's so many different things now. I mean, like Canelo had a, a steak that fucking lost weight with him. I, I wish I could find that fucking steak that makes you lose weight. But it's something as, easy, as simple as a steak. So when you look at it from that point of view, mistakes can be made. But Miller keeps making the same mistakes, same mistakes. And I'm not, you know, you know, I'm not, you know, kick, you know, kicking the man when he's down and that. But I mean, I mean, if they keep making mistakes and mistakes, the board maybe, the board or the commission or whatever it may be, maybe has to be a little bit more stricter because if we keep letting them get away with it, people are going to take the chance more than more, you know, in, in, in taking performance enhancing things. So, um, no, I mean, if it, if it keeps happening, it keeps happening, you know, if, if there's something not quite right. In the... But, I mean, Rick, there seems to be a massive grey area and it's very um, inconsistent in everyone seems to be treated differently and, and maybe that's wrong or right, depending on kind of what it is that they've been tested positive for. But uh, it is a big problem. But what, is, there a, is there a clear-cut solution that you just a straight ban from boxing? Because that seems to be the only realistic way of getting people to, to stop doing it is if the punishment was that harsh. Listen, I, I think these boxers out there, and there's not naming no names, that do do purposely take it. And and they they get away with it. You know what I mean? You know, you can certain things can be in and out of the system. I'm not naming names, but I I think it's on my opinion. I think there's fighters out there that probably do take a chance on something that they maybe shouldn't do, but if they take it at the right time, they can fluke it and get away with it. But every now and again, they might come a cropping, you know what I mean? They might they might they might land on the on the on the arts with it. And I think if that's the case, they, they should be put it I don't think you could give um you know a definite lifetime ban or, or something like that. But there should something more stronger should be should be made because if you think if I take it if I take a chance and I fail it, I'm only getting a slap on the wrist, so I might as well take the chance anyway. Mm. But I think if they know they're gonna get I have a find or been given 12 months out of the ring where they're not earning, I think they'll be a little bit more cautious to what they do stick in the mouth. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think you're right in what you were saying earlier, that there are circumstances where uh, situations regarding British boxers, and, and, and not just British boxers, but uh, boxers across the world have taken... Yeah, give them the benefit of the doubt, because it could happen. Yeah. yeah, but they've taken something unknowingly, or, 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 or so, there's been a circumstance around it, as opposed to outright cheating. And it's kind of hard to differentiate basically who you believe and who you don't. So that's where there's a big grey area as well. Yeah, well, the governing body then needs to, need to, you know, make how serious the thing is they've took. You know, could it have been a mistake? Could it have been an easy mistake for something else? And I think they've got to make a sensible de decision on what punishment they want to dis, dis out. If it's something point blank, you have to rights, then they need to be given a proper proper good um, seeing to, as they say. But if it's something that, you know, neither here nor there, could have been an easy mistake, could have got confused with this or that, then they should still get the ban. But I think, I think the, the governing bodies or the boards or controls or whatever have got to weigh it up. You know, if it's a serious one, we need to punish them bad. But if it's something a little bit like that, we need to punish them. But maybe, we know, we'll, we'll go a little bit easier on them, I think. But I think it's all about the commission just making sensible decisions on what the actual... Um, Offences, I guess, 